So our next speaker talks to a bit of nuclear renewables. I'd like to welcome Mark Nelson up to present. Mark holds a Master's in Philosophy in Nuclear Engineering from Cambridge University and is the Founder and Managing Director of the Radiant Energy Group and has been a consultant to clean energy industry and environmental organisations around the world. And you're going to make this a bit fun, right? And interactive. Yeah. Come on. So I'm coming from the USA, just got in from uh, Chicago uh, last night. Chicago is a 100% nuclear electricity city. It's one of the biggest concentrations of nuclear power in the world. And some very interesting and intimidating rumors are swirling about our nuclear plants. Just a few years ago, we almost lost about half of the nuclear power feeding Chicago. The problem is we've got these very, very clever inventions called electricity markets, and the market had evidently decided that nuclear power wasn't worth much money. See, Chicago's this uh, lump of demand on Lake Michigan, and um, it's sort of surrounded by nuclear plants, so that's good, except the nuclear plants are there at the edge of the big prairie where, uh, super cheap natural gas with no carbon tax. We're lowering the average price of electricity. And then on windy nights, wind built, because wind power is in fact quite cheap to construct in the Great Plains states, and there's uh, good subsidies that help that along from Washington, D.C., that wind power would come sweeping along the plains, and it would run into the price nodes at the nuclear plants, so you had a sort of a chopping off at the knees where the natural gas kept average prices quite low. And if the natural gas plants saw this cheap wind power coming, they could turn off and save gas and then turn back on when uh, the market price came back up above negative. And it made it to where nuclear plants that were operating at an unbelievably cheap rate, these are amortized nuclear plants in brilliant condition operating as flawlessly as you could want any bit of machinery in the world to operate. We're not making enough money in the electricity markets to stay online. So the operator of the nuclear plants was threatening to close them one by one until somebody squealed. So an un unpleasant situation to be sure, but in the nick of time, our governor of our state who was being pressured by the unions to save these plants, and actually he does like nuclear and he's a businessman and he's, he was sensible and he signed an agreement with the nuclear plants to buy their power for, oh, let's just throw some money in. USD, so American, American dollar prices, assume unless I very specifically say Australian, I'm talking about American dollars. For an American dollars price of about $50, $50, $55 dollars a megawatt hour. So $50, $55 a megawatt hour when the prevailing power prices at the time seem to be coming in at, you know, $40, $45 a megawatt hour. So that 50-55, he was very angry about those numbers because he thought it would be lower. That's what the nuclear plant owners said they needed over the next three years, or they would just shut the plants down. Then there was electricity price crisis. Those agreements flipped upside down. It poured money into our pockets for that one year, that crazy year of 2022 to 2023. And even though it's flipped back around to being a subsidy, we are still us electricity consumers of Chicago with nearly 100% clean electricity from nuclear, we were actually still over this period getting a subsidy. I've heard nothing about these contracts being renewed, and I can almost guarantee you that if the governor came and said, okay, let's, let's get you $60 a megawatt hour guaranteed, he would be laughed away. Why? Because data centers in the United States are coming to nuclear plants and working out agreements today to buy their power over decade or longer time periods, 24 hours a day, 365, except for, you know, the time that, that nuclear plants are off for um, refueling. Data centers are buying these nuclear contracts, super long-term contracts, nearly three digits per megawatt hour. I've heard numbers up $95 a megawatt hour or above. These are companies that have no or even negative interest in the environmental attributes of nuclear. This is just a pure 
ruthless need for any megawatt hours to fuel their data centers. So one of the most, ooh, I broke it. Coming to Australia and already breaking things. So we've just had the start of what could turn into an avalanche. I don't know if it's gonna trigger a political backlash, but um, there's a, one of the lowest cost nuclear plants in the United States, Susquehanna Power Plant, north of, uh, sort of north up the river from Philadelphia, uh, about 100 miles, I think. Susquehanna Nuclear Plant is that sole nuclear plant owned by a company called Talon. It was the first private equity owned nuclear plant in the US. And they're very aggressive about seeking strategies to maximize th their investment in their one nuclear plant. I don't know if Talon really cares about carbon. They're there to make money. They have a nuclear plant that's low cost and they've tried to make money on it. They have, they have fossil power. So Susquehanna was a very early mover when Bitcoin miners flooded back from China where they'd been made illegal. And the Bitcoin miners said, bro, bro, have you got some power? We'll do anything. We just need some power. We need it cheap. Um, we can turn off. If you need us to turn off the power, if you can give us a cheaper rate. That was the, I don't want to say canary in the coal mine, but that was the pioneer species of what's now turning into the biggest thing to happen in electricity in quite some time, certainly since I've been paying attention. So some of these data center companies or Bitcoin miners start developing the facilities directly at these nuclear plants to buy the power. Again, I can assure you that the Bitcoin miners are willing to use environmental or carbon-based stories, but they typically do not care. This is just a ruthless search for the cheapest megawatt hours under contract for the best terms for these miners. But it led to the start of the development of data centers at some of these early, early pioneer nuclear plants. So what we have at Susquehanna is that turned into a gigantic project where Amazon has not announced a single thing. They don't say anything about this. It's just, it was revealed by Talon who wanted to trumpet their financial success that they'd signed up Amazon to option up to 950 megawatts over a 10 to 15 year period. And not a single thing was heard about the price until rumors just started circulating. And I, I trust the ones I've heard nearing three digit dollars per megawatt hour. What's quite interesting about this from the perspective of the nuclear plant owners, and I swear this is coming around to this, the topic that I was given, which was the price of renewables and nuclear. For nuclear plant owners making electricity at, let's call it $30 per megawatt hour all in, the difference from getting $40 per megawatt hour from the electricity markets versus, say, call it $100 per megawatt hour, isn't the difference of, of, of that's not a 60% increase in profits or anything like that. That is hundreds of times increase, maybe up to 1,000% increase in profits, depending on which plant and what deals they sign. If you look and see the stock price of Constellation, one of the only pure play nuclear, nuclear power plant stocks anyone can own anywhere on planet Earth, you will see what's happening. The market is pricing in Constellation as if they're going to be able to sell much of their nuclear power at rates that are not 20% more profitable, 50% more profitable, 100%, 200, no, we're talking 400, 500, 1,000 percent more profit above the production cost of their plants, them being able to sell this power. Sure, Constellation says, oh, we'll do some up rates. Or they'll say, um, yeah, maybe we'll turn a power plant back on that we've turned off. That's good. That's additionality. It's one of the big words you hear in DC now, additionality. Is it actually more clean energy? But what we're really seeing, the reason why you see, say, Constellation stock price up a lot is because there is something very particular about the value of nuclear electricity as it can be bought and sold by people who simply must have the electricity. They must have it at one location. They must have it constantly or as close as you can get. And then they're willing to pay a premium above that to be physically close to leading population or, or industrial or government centers. I would suggest we should all pay very close attention to what's about to happen to Calvert Cliff's nuclear plant. And for those of us electricity nerds in the United States, we're waiting with a great deal of anxiety and bated breath to see what the results are going to be for, and bear with me here, the capacity auctions in June from PJM. So what is PJM? The world's largest, uh, uh, volume electricity market. So this is 
This is, uh, I think it's something in the many hundreds of terawatt hours are transacted over PJM. It goes from uh, Maryland and Washington, D.C., all the way over to Chicago. It's a big swath of what we would call the Rust Belt in the United States is the PJM electricity market. A lot of constellations, nuclear plants are in this market. Why is there such thing as a capacity market? Well, you guys, ha it sounds like you've had a lot of fun with your electricity markets too. I'm kind of famous for being against electricity markets in most implementations, but I'm going to be excited to watch them reveal a truth, which is the value of a nuclear kilowatt hour in a new age of clean industries and AI. This is not the same value as a nuclear kilowatt hour two years ago or four years ago. And what it's also doing, this is quite interesting, it's making a sort of divide between the value of a, say, a clean kilowatt hour of electricity from a wind farm several states away and the value of a nuclear plant where you can set up a, a ravenous, power-hogging new facility directly at the gates of a nuclear plant. You want one of the new land rushes? I'm from Oklahoma, famous for land rushes. The new land rush in electricity is the farmland around a nuclear plant because you may be able to set up a data center and option an enormous amount of constant power. What makes Amazon so interesting is that they've never said a thing about being pro-nuclear. In fact, in some ways, them moving first is connected to them not caring or not wanting to talk about nuclear. They just need the megawatt hours and they're willing to do it without arranging for additionality. That brings me back to when I said, you know, at the start of my talk, Chicago, we saved these nuclear, we saved four and a half gigawatts of nuclear power. Our electricity bill stayed cheap. Rumors are swirling of Microsoft working on a mega uranium brain, let's say, a nuclear powered data center that they may spend up to $100 billion developing to put them back in the edge. This is like the battleship races, perhaps, in, in World War I and beyond, where literally the biggest thing that could carry guns is what was considered to probably win the battle. The biggest thing with the most guns, that seems to be where we are in AI if it's not a bubble, which maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but if it's not a bubble, the biggest, largest, most extreme data centers may end up taking the biggest, tastiest prizes, especially if you can locate them close to cities. All of this, not ideology, for God's sake, is what seems to be driving the value of the nuclear megawatt hour in the United States. Does this mean something for Australia? I'm not sure. But when I look at news where people seem to be announcing, warning us in Chicago, no one's listening, no one cares. I knew that from the first battle to try to save half of our power supply from going offline in a month. Um, that Nobody understands really electricity. Um, but in Chicago, we're hearing rumors of five gigawatts when we have about 10 approximately 10 gigawatts of power near enough to chicago that i'm going to call it the chicago land electricity plant or nuclear plants so uh, almost five gigawatts of this seems to be on its way out of the power markets and straight to the most powerful computers that have ever existed what is this going to do to our power prices well that's you know if the electricity markets are set up to show what the value of power is, they are now doing an amount of revealing that nobody is going to like. They're going to reveal a lot. So does any of this have anything to do with Australia? I'm not sure. I'm here in part because this is a, this is a research trip for me too. I suspect that a strong argument for nuclear in Australia in the future may look something like this. You have a state that, for whatever reason, a fit of ideological optimism or something has decided to make nuclear legal. Then somebody in national government says, well, we're not going to force Australian states to allow nuclear, but if they decide they want it to, we're going to not stand in their way and we'll amend the law or something like that. Okay. So we have a state that says nuclear is okay. And then you have political parties that say, we love nuclear now. Whatever else we do or don't like, however you feel about climate, we love nuclear. So you have a you have a sandbox maybe there and you have some communities where in common with other new entrant countries, a few communities are led by coalitions of citizens or leaders who win the cultural battle for nuclear. And these communities say, we want it. We'll take the waste. We'll take the power plant. Just give us the jobs. Give us the power. 
nuclear is prestigious now, we want the prestige. So there we go. We have some places that nuclear could go. I would see it like this. Some Western countries have gotten back into nuclear by this time. When is this? Five years down the road, 10 years down the road. And the proposal is made to take the risk on getting a nuclear plant along with enough industrial off-takers to offset any risk that your electricity market revenues, whatever's remaining of your electricity market by then, or wherever this is that may not be relevant in this case, you come in with nuclear plants and enough industry to make it work, even if the nuclear is, say, on the grid enough that it matters physically for grid security to have this extra power. Now, are you going to have to have spinning reserve for grid stability? Certainly, that's a big, expensive question. Many, people's are, many people are looking at it. Uh, there's arguments on both sides. A lot of investment around the world is going to go into making products and services that replace the giant mass of spinning metal that used to stabilize the grid. So let's not count on a lot of that as revenue or whatever, and let's just say nuclear comes in uh, because people have you know, 500 megawatts or one gigawatt of guaranteed offtake in a way that it matters that they're in Australia, but they can no longer get a contract, a bankable contract for power, which seems to be the limiting factor for these nuclear data centers, mega centers um, in the US, that getting the contract for power at the volume and the time necessary to make the much larger investment in placing the equipment itself there. That's the limiting factor. And if that is what is enabled in an Australian state, it may be that if that's how nuclear comes to your shores. Uh, I talked to a lot of people with different opinions on electricity in Australia. Earlier today, I asked, China appears to be building American-designed nuclear plants at a cost of about 2.9 billion, maybe about 3 billion per 1.1 gigawatt reactor. What would that look like if you could somehow magically import that efficiency or take part in that design and construction heritage? If you could build nuclear at 1.1 gigawatts for, per 3 billion, as long as you built three or four at a time, would that be built in Australia today if it were legal? And if there's a, maybe a cautious yes, you are not going to get nuclear, especially not first nuclear at the cost that China does. Will an AP-1000, so that we heard about this earlier today, call it the culmination of the pressurized water reactor development global effort over 70 years or whatever. We've ended up with a product where people are talking about it again in a way that hasn't been talked about in the US for a long time. If this can be built in Australia for, call it, double the cost of building it in China, now you have a very interesting edge case where if there is indeed an economic price premium for that nuclear kilowatt hour, megawatt hour, like there is in the USA at the moment, and if there's some kind of hesitation or an inability to execute the other sources of energy the way it's being planned, for whatever reason, I'm just agnostic in this conversation, then there may be room for nuclear to cost much more per megawatt hour than renewables, but still find an economic case if the cultural and political landscape has already been cleared. So that's what I'll be watching. Sorry if that's a little bit abstract, but uh, um, I'm getting involved in this effort to build new nuclear in America, and it leads me to see cultural opposition as, well, at least in the US, that's no longer on our critical path. We, the nuclear industry in the US, cannot meet the demand for nuclear of any size. We are not prepared to meet that demand in the US, and I'm terrified we'll miss it before the window closes. I hope that we can get our act together and deliver the nuclear that America is currently demanding and that industries are ready to pay for, if only we could build it. I will be watching and of course come over here as often as invited to see if there's a way for Australia to participate in that story. Otherwise, I think you're engaging in a very interesting, maybe not a natural experiment, but you're on a profound adventure, almost as adventurous as France was when they tried to do the unprecedented and sort of trust fall into a all or mostly nuclear energy system. I don't know if I would have had the guts to go for that if I didn't know it already worked in France. We're about to see interesting things in, in Australia, and I think there's going to be adventure ahead, whether it does or doesn't include nuclear. I'm just here to support if you guys want to include nuclear. Thank you.